Good morning, Cyber Warriors. It's going to be a bit of a different video today because we've got the competition rounds coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, end of this week and then following week, because of fall break and the way that it works out for uh, different students around the, the country. Um, so there's a few things that you really need to do in order to be successful in, in any kind of operation or test, exam, competition, and, and that is preparation and coffee, sleep, sleep. Uh, you, you need to be well rested. Um, it's, it's difficult with the anticipation of having a competition the following day to actually get some sleep, but uh, if you can, it's, it helps more than a lot of people. Um, but preparation, let's talk about that for a bit. Uh, by now, everyone should have their own checklist for each of the different operating systems that we function on uh, and what you should be doing with those. And those checklists, a lot of really good generic checklists that are out there, um, you need to make sure that they are reorganized in a way that suits your competitors' needs, uh, whether you're you yourself are a, a cyber patriot competitor, or maybe uh, you know you're looking at uh, as a coach or a technical mentor. You know how do I prepare my uh, my competitors for the competitions? And understanding them is important. Uh, do they function really well in a command line environment? Are they adept at scripting? Gear things towards those things. Uh, if they're more comfortable in the GUI, and that's fine. There are more than one way to peel a potato in these operating systems, all of them. Uh, there isn't only one way to get a job function done. Uh, this is not how any of these operating systems work. Um, and, and have your checklist geared towards that. Uh, talk, talk to them about your priority of, of operations. What, what order of operations do you work with? Um, you know, here at Cochise County, we recommend that you go and you do the README. I mean, everyone group around that system and talk about the README. All right, what are the things we need to know about that? Do we have organization policies like minimum password age and these sorts of things? We need to make sure that those are account accounted for. Take notes. Actually write down physically who your administrators are, who your authorized users are. Um, it, what those authorized users, what groups that they're supposed to be in, uh, are they in the Sudoers group in, in Ubuntu, um, or are they administrators in Windows system? These are all incredibly important elements that you need to have accounted for. After you get the README all done and compressed and notes taken and things physically separated out, because this is important. Uh, the more that you do that, uh, the better you will be able to keep track of those things as you move forward. Uh, even if you're using a script, it's important to pull those pieces out because you're going to need that for your scripts. Um, and, and then after you get the readme done, there's always a forensics question or two uh, or, or maybe three. I don't know what this year will bring. But you want to take a look at those forensics questions because quite often they will have information you'll need later in the competition. Um, and, and we do practice uh, images that kind of lead you towards that, right? So we're uh, with our inside out uh, image for Windows 10, for example, we've got um, uh, type BNC, which is installed, which is, a, you know, remote administration tool, which isn't allowed. In the forensics question, we ask what ports it's listening on. And that tells you, oh, not only is this, you know, there's some unauthorized software there, I should probably do something about unauthorized software later, like uninstall it. Uh, but if you uninstall the op that before you answer that question, you don't know what ports it's listening on. You don't know the answer to that question. So you should take time. And and I wouldn't spend more than a half an hour on any of the forensics questions. If you don't know them or you can't Google through them quickly, move on. Maybe you will find out something later, like if you find some unauthorized software or a hidden share or something along those lines, hey, 
go back to that forensic question. Keep it in the back of your mind so that you can reference it and go back and, and do those things. Uh, and, and everyone should have their own checklist, as I said. Uh, you know, here we have our own checklists. Um, and, you know, we have, we have them in Word document form. No, I'm not showing you our checklist. Uh, <laughs> you have to find your own. Ah, no, I'm going to edit that out. But it, that's it's the thing. You want to make sure that you have your own checklist. And and what I like to do um, is I like to set up to where uh, my competitors can download a, an Excel spreadsheet to the host system and they can keep track of information that they learn or they get points for uh, and, and each of the different sections, right? So I've got the section for... Um, the, the forensics questions and I've got the, you know, you need to put the answer down in there. Um, you know, user accounts added, just yes or no. Uh, if you had to add, add one, uh, were all the passwords reset? I have helpful commands. I color code those commands so that they represent different things. Uh, the, the blue are PowerShell stuff. Black is command line. Um, GUI items are in green. Um, things that you have to provide, uh, for example, like if malware bytes finds and quarantines a file, you want to record what that file is because it may be needed for some other question or answer that you have. Um, so you may not get points for all of these individual items, but each of these things are good security practices and good things to keep track of so that you can go back it we have been doing this for a very long time and we have not gone through a single round yet where a team hasn't restarted their their image and you know restarting your image is important uh if you make a colossal mistake you break the scoring engine for example are you going to be satisfied with that low score Probably not. So if you have good notes, like the ones that I have there and that outline like that, and your, your spreadsheet needs to be geared towards your students and your you as the competitors. Um, I have a lot of really good command line stuff because I'm very familiar with command line. It makes sense to me. It's easy for me. Um, but if you're a gooey guy or gal, go for it. There's no problems with that. As I said, more than one way to peel the potato. Um, but the important thing is to make sure that you're actually going in and keeping track of each thing that happens. If you do something, record it. Even if you don't get points, especially if you get points though, because if you have to redo that operating system, you want to go through and get those things. Uh, we've had teams that re restarted an image with 45 minutes left in the competition. We're just like, why would you do that? And they had great notes and they powered right through and they got all of their points back within like the first 20 minutes. And then they're able to go through and find more things. And notes and communication are absolute key on your team um, as you go through with the competition. And I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because... I don't think that's necessarily something that is really defined very well in the training uh, information. Uh, we we talk about go and do these things, or you know, your Cisco training is this, and your Ubuntu training is that, and your Fedora training does this thing. Your Windows host and server training; these are the things you need to do. We don't talk very much about how you should attack the competition. Uh, and prepare yourself for that. And preparation is key. Um, if you have scripts that you're going to use, make sure that you understand what they do. Make sure you've tested them before you use them. Uh, because a script will break something faster than you can blink. And you want to have gone through rigorous testing before you get to the competition round. Never, ever use untried code during a competition. Never do it. It 
never works out well. Uh, I've been doing this for a number of years. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it for this video here. Um, just go out there, make a plan for what you're going to do. Talk with your coach and your technical mentor about your order of operations, how you plan on doing these tasks. Are you going to use users first? Are you going to do antivirus first? Uh, updates. Updates take a long time. Sometimes you have to reboot and then more updates and then reboot again and then more updates. How do we know we're done updating? When there are no more updates to apply. So, and I can't tell you how many years and how many rounds of competition when we're shutting down at the end and it's installing updates as it shuts down. And we don't have time to work and bring it back up and get those points because updates aren't counted as completed until your reboot cycle has completed. So you want to make sure that your updates are done near the beginning of the competition, not towards the end. So these are just things you need to consider. And um, as for always, I hope you uh, I hope you learned something. Happy hunting. And I'll see you in the next video.